Although the professional geologist in the house might cringe at this analogy, we have on our right-hand side our mother, Earth, that's very much like, on the left-hand side, the hard-boiled egg. If you know what a hard-boiled egg feels like, it's got that very thin yet brittle outer shell with the plastic, almost gooey-like inside. Very similar to what we would find on the right-hand side with our mother. Here we have a lava lamp. A uh, lava lamp is another way, another analogy we can use to understand what Earth is like in the inside. What a lava lamp is, is pretty much probably something that sits around in dorm rooms at IU down in the Bloomington where college kids probably stare at this and uh, for five hours while well, IUPY students are off doing work and doing good things. Anyway, uh, and so if we think about this, we can relate this to our Earth where we have a core. Uh, which is where the warmest temperatures are, and from there we've got this molten magma uh, uh, material that wants to escape, and so it wants to go through the mantle and go through and eventually get to the crust. Um, so another way to conceptualize this, if you stared at a lava lamp, you would see this. You'd see this gooey stuff rising to the top, very similar to our Earth. First off, you need to explain what we're looking at here. This is a cross-section of Earth. So essentially here we have Earth, and we just slice right down the middle of it. Now we're looking at it from the side view after cutting uh, and slicing it right in half. So there in the center, we've got the inner core, uh, which is solid metallic iron and nickel, which is why it's colored that color there of silver. Uh, then we have that outer core, which is essentially molten material, uh, extremely, extremely hot temperatures. Uh, then at, for, from there, we've got the lower mantle, then much of the mantle, then finally we have this kind of greenish line uh, right before the crust, and that's the upper mantle. Uh, and it's greenish because it has the mineral olivine, which is green in color. Uh, and so that outer uh, crust, we once again can uh, relate that to uh, the uh, thin, brittle shell that we'd find on a hard-boiled egg. And so the lithosphere is the analogy of that thin, brittle uh, outer shell of a, a hard-boiled egg. One of the things is the lithosphere is also referred to as the crust and the upper mantle, which we can see there in that yellow box. Further, the continental crust is thicker than the oceanic crust. Not important right now, but we'll come back to that idea here in a minute. Um, and once again, the lithosphere is that thin, rigid, brittle outer shell that, as we say at the bottom, floats on a slowly moving athenosphere. Uh, and the athenosphere is that plasticky, gooier part of a hard-boiled egg. And here we're going to find a weaker, yet hotter part of the mantle, where we have a lot of that molten material. So think of that when you think of a volcano spewing all of that lava. Uh, that molten material was what we would find here in the asthenosphere, of course, at much warmer temperatures. We go back over to the cross-section view. Those arrows indicate that molten material it wants to escape. That hot, hot temperatures, we know this warm air rises, and so in this case it expands and wants to go out in all different directions. And so one of the things we're going to find is that the warmest temperatures are going to be found closer to the core, the cooler temperatures are going to be found uh, more towards the outer part of this cross-section here. So another way we can visualize our lithosphere and our asthenosphere is here on our lava lamp.